Time report. Now, on the back of a dismal monsoon expectation, Crystal has gone ahead and cut their GDP growth forecast by 50 basis points to 7.4%. They expect agricultural growth to be 1.5% on the back of a weak pace of 0.2% in FY15. And on the demand side, they expect consumption revival to be only moderate, cushioned somewhat by lower inflation and the interest rate cuts. DK Joshi, the senior director and chief economist at Crystal, now joins in. Mr. Joshi, thanks very much for speaking with us, sir. Uh, the monsoon forecast has been cut by the government, but do you think the impact could be as severe as 50 basis points on the GDP? I mean, what is it uh, that you're predicating this 50 basis point cut in your forecast to? Well, I think uh, if you look at the, the IMD forecast, it is uh, they're talking of 66% chance of monsoons being 10% uh, deficient or more than 10% deficient. That is one. So risk is more on the downside. Second, I think there's 90% chance of an El Nino playing out, which, me, which messes up the distribution of, uh, of, of regional distribution of rain, or which can uh, mess up the regional distribution of rain. And I think on top of that, if the rains are deficient, this is uh, a consecutive, this would be a second uh, a bad year after uh, 2014. So the efficacy of the irrigation system would also be weak. But taking everything into account, I think the risk seems to be more on the downside, and that is what our outlook is uh, reflecting. So we have paired our agriculture growth down to 1.5%, which is, uh, we're not saying agriculture will not grow, but will uh, the, the chances that it will grow much slower, and that is what uh, uh, is getting reflected in our outlook. Having said that, uh, the, the uh, we've not changed our inflation forecast, which we retain at 5.8% CPI inflation for 2015-16 for the reason that government has displayed its ability to control food inflation even in a bad monsoon year last year. And this year also they have some ammunition which they can use, food grain stocks or imports uh, where I think edible oil uh, prices globally are quite uh, soft. So I think the edible oil imports would be cheaper. The pulses is one area where we could face uh, difficulty because the global prices are also high. So I think overall, uh, uh, what we see is a more downside risk to agriculture this year and which is getting reflected in our Okay. Uh, Mr. Joshi, afternoon. Could you tell us what your earlier estimate of agri-growth in F516 was? We know you've pared it down to 1.5%, but we just wanted to know what your earlier expectation is to get a sense of, you know, how much you've, you know, lowered the agri-growth. Well, I think our earlier estimate was around the trend growth rate, which is uh, we, when we assume a normal monsoon, we typically uh, take the agriculture growth at 3% as the, as the base case, and that was our earlier forecast was accordingly 3%, and which we have reduced to 1.5. Um, so the Reserve Bank has, uh, you know, hiked the Jan 2016 CPI inflation forecast to 6%. So what is it that is giving you the comfort that uh, you've maintained your own, uh, you know, target at 5.8% for CPI? You think uh, the risk of a bad monsoon couldn't play havoc here? It can play, I think, but if government is proactive enough, uh, as I was pointing out, they can, they can, uh, uh, they can, tame the inflation at uh, around 6% 6, 6 levels. I think they have ammunition to do that. It's just that they have to be proactive and ensure that enough supplies are there. Uh, under that condition, I think inflation can be controlled. But as I was pointing out, I mean, even last year uh, was a bad monsoon year, as we all know, and inflation actually fell, fell from 9.5% to 6% and more so in the food category. So I think the same, applying the same logic to this year, we expect the central government to be extremely proactive this year uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and and control food inflation within 6% and at 5.8% we are saying is the, is the average for the year, which is actually, if you look at the consensus forecast for the, uh, for, for the year 15-16, they are below our, our forecast. Our forecast is still on the higher side. Hmm. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on consumption? Do you not fear that, um, you know, with successive, uh, you know, weak monsoons, consumption could get hit? Because we've already seen it, you know, slow down a bit, particularly on the rural side. Uh, what are you expecting, you know, in terms of the services growth in F516? And have you pared down your estimates there? Yeah, I think services growth has also been pared down to 9.8%. And I think as far as the consumption is concerned, the consumption is the consumption demand is the weak link in the Indian economy right now. And uh, if, if rural demand suffers again this year, the proclivity of the rural folks to spend would be, uh, would be less. I think they would rather uh, hold, hold on to whatever savings they have. So I think in that condition, I think the recovery of consumption will get delayed and that will also delay the recovery of, uh, of, uh, of, of private investment because 
most of the of the manufacturing investments are not happening in the private sector because there are huge capacities. So I think you need to create demand to to uh, to prop up uh, capacity utilization, which won't happen if if the rural demand falters this year. So I think there there is there is a risk to consumption, but we still expect the consumption uh, to be slightly better in 2000. Uh, 15, 16 over 14, 15, because I think the inflation being low, the oil prices, if they remain where they are, I think that still leaves some money with, in the hands of the people, which could be utilized for, for discretionary spending. So I think overall, uh, a very, very mild lift in consumption is what we see, despite uh, despite the rural... Uh, 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 Right. So, Mr. Joshi, just to get in a few numbers, you've said you've cut the services forecast to 9.8%. What was it earlier? And consumption, we can see, uh, stands at 6.6%. That's the forecast given by you. Uh, what was it earlier? I think it was uh, consumption earlier was, uh, uh, I think we, uh, it was around the same, actually, uh, slightly, slightly higher. Uh, around 7%. And as far as the, the, the services is concerned, it was slightly over 10%. Okay. And uh, services has been paid down because I think the spillover effects of weaker monsoons uh, will, will, sure. will show up in the services as well. Okay. okay, sure. Very quickly, do you think this will have a spillover impact in, on F517 growth as well? Well, I think, as I said, if, if, if the growth, uh, if the demand doesn't lift uh, as we expect it to, uh, then I think, obviously, the, the recovery in investment will get delayed. And uh, that, that's a worry, I think, uh, that the, the private consumption demand might get muted. I think if actually we have to wait till the month of July and August to know the real impact of monsoons. As of now, the risks are loaded more towards the downside. Uh, but I think if if things turn out more favorable than uh, than what we believe today, then I think the risk to 2016-17 will be reduced. But yeah, I think it this can delay the investment cycle. All right, Mr. Joshi, we'll leave it at that. Thanks very much at the moment for joining.